Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel where I will help you start keto and stay keto with no bullshit advice. My name is Autumn. I've been keto for over two years now. Lost 40 pounds on this diet. I've maintained this way of eating. I absolutely love it and I can't wait to help you get to the point where you love it too. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. That way I know you want to see more from me and I'll know exactly what kind of stuff to make in the future. Today's video is about a really hot topic in the keto community which is what do you do when you fall off the wagon? And how do I get back in ketosis? Now, before we get started, I'm not a nutritionist. I am not a doctor. Everything I share on this channel is just from me to you. This is what I've done. This is what works for me. I'm not in any way telling you you have to do keto. I think you should always consult with a medical professional before you change your diet in any significant way. This is this is just my experience. I wanna share everything that's worked for me with you guys so you don't have to go through the same kind of bullshit to figure out what works and what doesn't. I usually don't go off plan with keto, but the other day I had a couple things that were a little carby and I could tell it knocked me out of ketosis. There are a few ways that I know that. With keto, I have a lot more energy. I can wake up earlier. I can stay up later. I just don't feel drowsy or heavy or groggy. But I woke up and I just felt tired. Like I could not get out of bed. I was a little swollen. I was retaining some water and I have carpal tunnel and keto helps me not feel as much pain where I have that problem. When I woke up, I felt a lot of pain in my wrists. So I knew I was kicked out of ketosis. I got all kinds of hunger pain, sugar cravings throughout the day that I usually don't get. Tell cell signs, I'm kicked out of ketosis. Crap. But I kind of knew it was gonna happen. The thing a lot of people do whenever they get kicked out of ketosis and they're worried about like what next is they get back into that crappy mindset that diet culture has given us, which really sucks. That mindset is, oh, well, if I have one thing that's not on plan, I'm going to spiral out of control. You're not going to spiral out of control. You are able to do this, I promise. And if you make a mistake, then you learn from it. Mistakes are actually necessary. Failures are necessary to learn, to get better. So thank yourself for learning something about your body, and we're going to move on. So step one, what I do is I take a step back from all of those crazy thoughts and I think about my why. If you watched the very first video on my channel, then you know all about my why. And if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to go watch it. But your why is the most important thing that will keep you on track throughout anything. To any goal, if your why is strong enough, then you will be able to handle this. So take a step back, remember your why. And if you haven't really set one out, then you need to establish it. Write it down on a piece of paper. And think about what it is long-term that you want to achieve. Go back to my video and you'll see all about mine. It'll be a great way to help you learn. If you want me to make a video about long-term goal setting and establishing your why and staying on track, then go to the comments and write it below. That way I know you want to see more like that. So number one, step back, examine your why. Is it strong enough for you to keep going? And if it's not strong enough, then you either need to find a different why or this may not be for you. And that's just the reality of it. Sometimes we have to take the L. We, we try something, we realize we don't like it, and we just have to do something different. For me, my why is strong enough, so I know I want to keep doing keto, so I move on to step two. Step two, drink lots of water. Water is something that I struggle with too, even after multiple years on keto, even after 25 years of life. Drinking enough water is just not easy. We all go through it. I am guilty of drinking a whole lot of diet soda on occasion, a whole lot of coffee. It's something I'm working on too. We're not all perfect, but there are a few things that help me drink more water. Number one, find a good water bottle. And this seems dumb, but if you have a vessel that you really like drinking out of, you will drink more out of it. If I have a plastic water bottle that I just hate drinking out of, I'm, I'm not going to use that. I got this from Ultima and I love this water bottle. It's my most favorite one. It doesn't stain. It's glass. Um, it's easy to clean. You just take this out. You take the little, the little ring out and clean it. Um, and it holds the perfect amount of water. This is what I mix my electrolytes in. I put almost everything in this. Boss has these sparkling waters and this is actually a recycled bottle from them and it's got a little pinch ring on it and I just took the label off and I use it all the time. I still wash it and reuse it. Highly recommend. It doesn't have a little silicone ring in it. It's just a twist top. Your favorite cup is totally up to you. Sometimes I drink tea out of mason jars. Sometimes I use a coffee cup. 
It just depends on what I'm feeling. The next thing that I do to make sure I drink more water is I'll drink a lot of hot tea. Hot tea is a great way to have un an unsweetened beverage that's still flavored without the extra calories, without artificial sweeteners. You gotta check and make sure your tea is no carb. I use peppermint tea. This one is from Bigelow. It's my favorite peppermint tea. It's just a good way to kind of mix it up throughout the day so you're not just drinking water and you have that little variety to help make your brain interested. I also like peppermint tea because it's really relaxing and sometimes I can get a little stressed out, so I like that one. And my final tip for drinking more water is if you really just struggle to remember to drink water, use an app. I use the car manager app, more on that later, to help track the amount of water that I drink. But you can also use Fitbit. You can also just set iPhone reminders. You can set an echo reminder. There are so many tools available to track water intake and remind you to drink water that it's, there's no excuse. So I highly recommend that if you just need that little nudge every now and then saying, hey, go drink your water. Number three is if you feel like you need help staying on track, use an app to help you. I use Car Manager. It's super easy to use. There's a paid version and I paid for it and it just wasn't worth it to me. The free version is totally good enough. You really don't need to pay for it. There's other apps like Chronometer. Some people use MyFitnessPal. I don't prefer that one. If you guys want a video on how to set your macros in Car Manager, put a comment in the box below and I'll make that video for you guys. If you absolutely don't need an app to track your macros, you can do it on a piece of paper if you prefer that or you just can do it in your head. You know, if I feel like I'm eating too many carbs or if I just need to check and make sure I'm getting enough protein throughout the day, sometimes I'll use that app to just check in. The fourth tip, and this is a big one, I don't do anything crazy to get back into ketosis. Um, I don't do an extended fast. It's just not me. I understand there's benefits of extended fasting. There's some trade-offs you have to do. It's just not something I want to do long-term, and so I don't try to implement, you know, little fixes to get me there because I, my goal isn't to do extended fast long term. I love food. I love to eat every day. I love to cook and so I don't want to do that. I think that's something that we've learned from diet culture is when you mess up you've got to overcorrect to put yourself back at equilibrium and I don't I don't think you have to do that. I think if you mess up you just need to do what you were doing before that worked well because you learned from it. You can move on. So I don't do extended fast. I also don't do egg fasts. I don't do protein fasts. I don't do water fast. I don't do that snake drink fast. That's just not who I am. That's up to you if you prefer to do that sort of thing, but I wouldn't recommend it. Number five is dealing with the keto flu. If you have gone off track and you've knocked yourself out of ketosis, you've got to get back into ketosis, you're probably going to deal with the keto flu again. Uh, if you don't know what the keto flu is, it's basically the imbalance of electrolytes and water that your body goes through as it adjusts from using carbs for fuel to using ketones for fuel. You'll probably experience some headaches, you'll experience some tiredness for a little bit. It can be a lot more severe for people who don't know how to manage it and who have not educated themselves on what the keto flu is and how to deal with it. If you just have an electrolyte supplement on hand, you have some sodium on hand, and you have some water, I promise you it will get so much better so much faster. I have these things out here because this is what I use whenever I'm dealing with the keto flu or whenever I'm working out a lot. These are the electrolytes and sodium supplements that I have. It's very simple. I have these because I bought them on Amazon. The flavor's okay. I haven't done an official review on here, so I'll, I'll save my opinions on this for another day. But these last a long time. This has 90 servings in it and so does Ultima. The flavor is so much better on this. This is, this is actually my top recommendation for electrolytes and I have a promo code for you. I'll put it in the description below if you want to use it to get 20% off of the Ultima products. But this is my absolute favorite for electrolytes. I've also reviewed these and if you're doing fasting and you've cut out sweeteners and these are probably going to be the best option for you. These are from Keto Bean and this is like a two-part system. You can do one or the other, but they work better if you do both of them. Now, if you're taking an electrolyte supplement like this, that's not the end of the story. I also recommend getting a little bit more sodium because when your body is flushing out the extra water that it's retaining, it's also gonna flush out the electrolytes and the sodium. And you want it to kind of hold on to some of that water so you're not dehydrated. Having a little extra sodium will do that for you. Now, what I would do is, and I'll do it in tea because you really don't taste it, take a little bit of this, just that much, put in your water, and that's it. Do that over and over throughout the day, and you'll get a little bit of extra sodium. It will help you fight off the headaches. It'll help you with a little bit of your tiredness. It'll help you retain that water so you don't feel so dehydrated. Especially if you're working out, you can take all the electrolytes in the world, but if you're not getting sodium too, then you're just, this is doing nothing for you. So this is a two-part system. 
if you don't want to do this and you really like salt, and I'm not even going to lie to you, sometimes it just takes a little bit of coarse salt and just eat it. Now, before keto, I used to get margaritas with extra salt on the rim. I used to use a little bit of extra salt anyway, so salt has never bothered me. But if you have a hard time having salt throughout the day, a little bit in your drinks will help you a ton. I think it also tastes really good in coffee if you use just a tiny bit of salt to cut the bitterness, like maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe not even that much, just a little bit. The next thing that will really help you deal with the keto flu is doing something active. Now I don't mean, I don't mean strenuous, like hit level exercise, not what I mean. Maybe try walking around the neighborhood or just walking your dogs or doing a little bit of yoga, something really low pace, low pressure for you to get your blood flowing just a little bit and to make sure that you are drinking water. I find that when I do a little bit of moderate exercise, my drive to drink water is a little higher. So that helps me with my water intake also. Final tip that I have for you guys for getting back into ketosis after you go off plan is just to get your mind off of eating. Get your mind off of what is going on here because no matter if you're thinking about it, or you're not thinking about it, your body's gonna do the same thing. You've probably heard the phrase, a watched pot never boils. If you're sitting here waiting for your body to get into ketosis and trying to track with a blood meter every two hours, your body's gonna do the same thing regardless. And you're just, in my opinion, that wastes a lot of energy. I don't wanna waste the energy sitting here watching paint dry, basically. I, I can't do that and it'll make, it'll drive me nuts. So I really recommend that you find something else to do. Um, that is not food related. I promise, I promise they will all be over in a day or two and you'll be back into ketosis. Just remember your long-term goals and keep doing what you already do well. So yeah, that's my video. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to like this video and if you want to see more from me day to day on you know, what I'm eating, what I recommend, what I don't recommend. I recommend that you follow me on Instagram. My username is at resting keto face there. You can also follow me on TikTok. It's the same username. I post all kinds of really helpful, short, quick tips there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.